Hello, <clears throat> my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family systems therapist for 32 years now, and I'm offering these videos in hopes that I can pass on to you what I have learned across 73 years of life and 31 years as a professional therapist. In this video, I want to offer you what perhaps is a different way of looking at a common element of life in America or life on Earth. I want to offer you a different way of looking at and managing stress. Many people talk routinely about stress and they only have a vague idea about what it is. Um, let me check in with you on that. How would you define stress if, say, an 11 year old person asked you, What is stress? What would you say? What is it? Um, many people, uh, both lay and professional people, propose that stress is a mental and hormonal, meaning, meaning physiological, reaction um, to things like these. Choosing to do too much in too little time. It raises people's anxiety Yes, you relate. Making decisions or being forced to make decisions without enough information or preparation. That can cause, quote, stress, unquote. You agree? Has that ever happened to you? How about taking on too many responsibilities at once or being forced to do so? Can that cause stress? Have you experienced that? How about having too few resources to manage the responsibilities that you currently have? Does that cause stress? It does for me. Another lesser known source of stress is grieving. All of us, all healthy people, form bonds or attachments, emotional, spiritual, psychological bonds with a whole range of different things, far more than just people, ideas, places, dreams. And inevitably, we either are forced to choose or um, circumstances change so that we lose things of value. That causes the normal human response of grief. Grief is a complex emotional mental process and usually causes stress. You agree? Another thing that's epidemic, I think, in our culture and causes stress for adults and kids is trying to control the uncontrollable. <clears throat> Many people are only hazily aware of what can I control and what can I not, and how do I react to things I can't control. The final common surface cause of stress I propose is fear of the unknown. People get anxious, worried, scared um, about what's going to happen. Could this happen? Could that happen? Uh, we stress ourselves by being afraid of what we don't know and can't anticipate or predict. So these, I propose, are normal surface causes of what we collectively know as stress. Um, I don't think they're the real causes. I propose that the real causes are three. There are three combined true root causes for stress. If you don't know what the true causes are, you can't reduce them. That's the purpose of this video. I want to propose these three core causes of stress and enable you to try and reduce them if you choose to do so. Here they are. The first of three real causes of stress, mental, psychological, physiological, hormonal stress, is having a fragmented personality from childhood trauma, I mean parental abuse, abandonment, and neglect, 
that causes psychological wounds, the first of which is a fragmented personality. What that does is cause something called a false self. If you haven't seen my Lesson 1 videos, that will mean nothing to you. More on that in a moment. So the first cause of stress is having your resident, wise, true self and related manager subselves in charge of you and making your decisions. If you are guided by uh, or controlled by a well-meaning, protective, false self, that will cause you stress in many ways. So that's the first of three causes. For instance, the, your true self knows how to balance your responsibilities, say no to responsibilities that you really don't want or can't discharge. Your true self knows how to grieve, how to balance your eating, your sleeping, your rest, and your work. And your true self knows how to manage your other subcells. Uh, which generally produces serenity and peace as opposed to anxiety, fear, hurt, anger, emptiness, overwhelm. Your true self can do these things if she or he is free to guide you. I propose the second core source of stress in at least our country, if not all countries, is general unawareness slash ignorance, meaning lack of knowledge, of how to think clearly and how to communicate effectively. Much stress is generated by interpersonal contact, conflicts of various kinds. Would you agree? Do your relationships cause you stress at home, at work, in the neighborhood? Um, not knowing how to communicate effectively, which means getting your needs met and the other person's need met also, contributes significantly to the experience of daily and chronic stress. The good news is, if you, can, if you choose to learn how to think and communicate effectively, you can reduce this cause of stress substantially. It's doable. The third cause of stress, in my experience, is lack of faith in a benign, accessible, higher power. I am not, underline not, here to preach religion. I am here to suggest, from personal experience and studying many other wise, learned people who have journeyed far in their own lifetimes, that growing and evolving a faith in a benign, accessible, higher power that you can believe in is a major relief from stress because if you have such a gift, if you evolve and choose and develop such a gift, you can, at times of great uh, stress and conflict and overload, say, I can't do it, I turn it over to you my higher power. I turn it over. Help me, please. I need help. Can you guide me? Can you strengthen me? Can you support me as I get through this? People who have that faith are notably less stressed than people who, for a whole bunch of different reasons, have not established such a faith. It's not a matter of willpower. It's not a matter of logic. It's a matter of experience. So I propose that the three real causes of the stress in your life are you may be dominated by a well-meaning false self. Incidentally, what is a false self? A false self is a collection of different normal personality subselves, each of which has a special function. See if you resonate with these normal subselves. A perfectionist subself who says you've got to do it just right. An inner critic who says if you don't do it, you're bad or you're going to fail or some terrible thing is going to happen. 
a driver personality sub self who says, come on, come on, come on, get it done, do it, do it, do it, now, now, now. Do you have such a self? Do you have such an inner voice? That's what sub self's manifest as, is inner voices. How about a popular uh, personality sub self whose specialty is worrying? Oh, if this only, I don't think I can. If this doesn't happen, then something awful is going to happen. Another part of your false self can be a pessimist. The worst possible thing is going to happen. I know it. I know it. I just know it. You have a voice like that? In addition to these normal, common personality subcells, they are trying their best to protect a group of normal inner children, plural. These include a scared inner child, one or more, of a guilty inner child, a shamed inner child, a hurt inner child, and a lost inner child. So if you put these subcells together in various combinations, they form something that can be called a false self. If they do not trust your true self, and if they take over, blend with, and disable your true self, they will cause all the emotions and the thoughts that you associate with significant stress. If they trust your true self and other manager subcells to manage the local situation, they will not give you those feelings and thoughts to excess. Does that make any sense to you yet? It may not. Overall, my point here is this. People often refer to, worry about, talk about, preach about, advise about how to manage stress. And most people are unaware of the difference between the surface causes of stress and the three real causes that I've tried to outline here. This is very skeletal and superficial description, but I hope it will alert you to the possibilities. Lesson one and lesson two in my YouTube videos and in the related sfhelp.org nonprofit ad-free educational website will show you how to free your true self and how to learn how to think and communicate effectively. If you study those and apply what you learn there, I bet you will find the amount of stress in your life daily and over time will go down. How would that be? If you're a parent, wouldn't it be nice if you taught these things to your children? They depend on you. Here are the links to all my YouTube videos. Please do look at Lesson 1 and Lesson 2. There's a lot there. Take your time. Lesson 1 and 2 are meant to be studied together. Okay? It takes some months to do it. It's well worth it. It's an investment. Here's a link to my website, which is comprised of seven self-improvement courses. You'll see links uh, in this web page to Lesson 1 and Lesson 2. They are self-improvement lessons and give you, there's a study guide in each lesson that shows you step by step how to do the lesson, just like a college course. You're free to do it at your own pace. There is no cost. No ads. The ball's in your court. I hope you will invest in your own serenity and peace and choose to reduce the stress in your life. Any comments on any of my videos or the website uh, are very welcome. I'd be glad to hear from you. Thanks for watching.